Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over physical properties of aldehydes and ketones. So both aldehydes and ketones have a carbonyl group uh, where the carbon is double bonded to an oxygen. And you'll notice down below that the carbonyl group is moderately polar. And this is due to the fact that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So it's going to draw those shared electrons towards itself a little bit more. And that means that carbon won't have uh, co-ownership or equal ownership of those electrons. Uh, they're going to be a little bit drawn away. So this leaves oxygen partially negatively charged and carbon partially positively charged. The other thing to notice here, though, is that the oxygen atom does not have any hydrogen atoms bonded to it. So it cannot hydrogen bond between aldehyde molecules or ketone molecules. However, it can interact through dipole-dipole interactions. So for example, let's say we have multiple copies of a, um, an aldehyde. So we know the oxygen is partially negative, the carbon is partially positive. Let's say we have another aldehyde. It's going to align itself so that the partially positive end of the carbonyl group is facing the partially negative end of the other carbonyl group. Because remember, opposites attract. So then we get this interaction between carbon and oxygen and that would be a dipole, dipole interaction or intermolecular force. Okay, so uh, let's just review very briefly the strengths of all of the different intermolecular forces. So what is the weakest intermolecular force? Van der Waals, or uh, also known as London dispersion forces. So that is weaker than dipole-dipole interactions. And dipole-dipole interactions are weaker than hydrogen bonds. So aldehydes and ketones are going to kind of be in the middle. Um, and this is going to affect things like their boiling points. All right, so because of the polarity of the carbonyl group, these groups can interact via dipole-dipole interactions, but the attraction is not as strong as hydrogen bonding. So this makes the boiling point of aldehydes and ketones higher than alkanes, but lower than alcohols. So remember, when we talked about alkanes, we said that the uh, intermolecular force between two alkanes would be the weakest force, that van der Waals or London dispersion force. So we can even write that down here. And when we talked about alcohols in the last chapter, we said that um, the OH groups on alcohols can hydrogen bond with each other. So again, aldehydes and ketones are kind of in the middle here. So down below, we have a table comparing physical properties of alkanes, aldehydes, ketones, and alcohols. So the alkane, butane, um, has a boiling point of zero degrees Celsius. But if we look at an aldehyde with uh, the same molecular weight, 58, um, its boiling point is 49 degrees Celsius. So the boiling point of the aldehyde has, um, is much larger than that of the alkane just due to those dipole-dipole interactions. Same with the ketone. Um, here we're using a ketone with the same molecular weight as the molecules above, and its boiling point is 56 degrees Celsius. So a little bit higher than the aldehyde, but much higher than the alkane. Again, just due to those dipole-dipole interactions. 
Finally, if we look at an alcohol that has a similar molecular weight to the molecules above, its boiling point is 97 degrees Celsius. So now the boiling point has jumped all the way up to 97 degrees Celsius for the alcohol, just because the alcohol has a much stronger intermolecular force with other copies of that alcohol. So remember, if you're trying to break apart these intermolecular forces, it won't take very much energy to break apart London dispersion or van der Waals forces. It will take a little more energy to break apart dipole-dipole interactions, and then it takes even more energy to break apart hydrogen bond intermolecular forces. So that's why the boiling points increase for these different types of molecules. We can also look at a chart or graph that shows us the same thing. So on the x-axis, we have molecular weight, which is increasing from left to right. Um, and then we have boiling points increasing going up the y-axis. So alkanes are on the bottom in purple. And of course, the boiling points for alkanes will increase with molecular weight, but that's true for all molecules. What we're really interested in is comparing, for instance, um, molecules that have a similar molecular weight. So the alkane is down here. And then if we look at um, an aldehyde, its boiling point is much greater just due to those slightly stronger intermolecular forces. And then if we look at an alcohol at the very top, that has an even greater boiling point uh, just due to those even stronger hydrogen bonds. Okay. So let's um, talk a little bit about hydrogen bonding because I know I just said that copies of an aldehyde or copies of a ketone would be attracted to each other through dipole-dipole interactions. But if we mixed an aldehyde with water or mixed a ketone with water, for example, then we do see hydrogen bonding. So the carbonyl group can hydrogen bond with water molecules because the oxygen atom has a partial negative charge. And that will attract the partial positive charge of a hydrogen atom in the water molecule. So down below, we've got our aldehyde and we've got our water molecule. So if we mix those, the uh, partial positive hydrogen from water will be attracted to the partial negative oxygen on the aldehyde. And same goes for our ketone example with water. The partial positive hydrogen from water is attracted to the partial negative charge on oxygen on the ketone. So it does matter what scenario you're in. Um, so if you have a pure aldehyde or pure ketone, the interactions between molecules will be dipole-dipole. But if you mix them with water, now the interactions will be hydrogen bonds. So this also tells us that low molecular weight aldehydes and ketones are water soluble. And that does depend on this alkyl group that's bonded or the two alkyl groups that are bonded to the ketone, if they're really long, like let's say we have um, uh, seven carbons coming off of that ketone or that aldehyde, that's going to create um, very hydrophobic sections of the molecule. So that will make the overall molecule less soluble. All right, and then this chart is showing us those same molecules from the previous uh, table we looked at, and we're talking about solubility here instead. So again, the alkane um, is not capable of hydrogen bonding, so it would be insoluble in water. But the aldehyde, the ketone, and the alcohol are all 
um, capable of hydrogen bonding with water, so they are all soluble in water. But again, it depends on how big these alkyl groups are on those different molecules. If they're too long, then that's going to decrease the solubility of the molecule. Because at that point, they're almost similar to the alkane. Okay, so let's just cover a few important aldehydes and ketones in the world around us. So you might have heard of progesterone and testosterone. Those are both really key uh, components of our biology. Um, so these are the female and male sex hormones. Um, so down below we have the structure of progesterone and you can see there's a ketone on one end and a ketone on the other end as well. Um, and then we also have testosterone, which has a ketone on one end, and actually it has an alcohol on the other end. But notice that other than um, that, the two molecules are really, really similar to each other. So the main difference between progesterone and testosterone is this ketone and this alcohol. So it's just kind of crazy that these hormones have such a small difference, but they can actually make a really big difference in our bodies. Also, some aldehydes and ketones are very fragrant and they're actually used in flavorings for foods. So vanillin, which comes from vanilla, um, that is an aldehyde. Cinnamaldehyde, which is in cinnamon, you can probably guess is an aldehyde. It's in the name conveniently. Um, citral has that AL ending for aldehydes, and uh, that is used in citrus flavoring. And then camphor is a ketone, and that is what gives that kind of medicinal odor in certain products. Okay, so uh, aldehydes and ketones are all around us. Uh, they are very important functional groups. Um, and even if you look on your ingredients list for certain foods, you'll probably see some of these on uh, or listed. Okay, so next time we're going to start diving into some aldehyde and ketone reactions. Um, and I'll also post flashcards for those reactions, which will hopefully help you study for the exam that's coming up. So I will see you in the next video.